Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So a while back, Aya Neo teased one of their upcoming devices, and they're calling it the Aya Neo Air. And this is the device you're seeing here in a reveal trailer they released a couple weeks ago. Now this handheld PC is appealing in many ways. Number one, it's small. It's about the size of a Nintendo Switch Lite. And on top of that, it's able to run both Windows or Steam OS, and the hardware inside is comparable to something like the Steam Deck. And one of the strengths of Aya Neo is that they ship worldwide, so of course there's a gap here where Steam Deck doesn't ship everywhere. And so myself, along with a lot of other people, were pretty excited about the potential of this device. It's more portable than the Steam Deck, it could potentially be more readily available in more markets, and it just looks pretty nice too. Now, understandably, I had some trepidation about the price. They didn't release anything about it initially, and typically Aya Neo handheld PCs go for $1,000 or more. But they promised that this one was going to be affordable. Well, flash forward to about a week ago, and then AYN, which is the company that made the Odin device, started teasing their own next handheld, which is going to be based on Windows as well. Now this got me pretty excited too, because AYN is known for making high quality at low cost, and I'd much rather use something with a Windows or Steam interface than Android like on the Odin. And so this new device is called the AYN Loki, and it actually went up for pre-order starting yesterday. But I gotta say, the whole pre-order thing has been kind of a mess, and so in this video here, we're gonna look at the AYN Loki and some of the models that are available, and we're also gonna look at some comparable and competitive models within the Aya Neo line too. So let's start with the AYN Loki, and these are the prices right here. In general, there's kind of two halves that are happening. There's the sub $300 range, and then also a higher tier with more performance. The ones that are under $300 are called the Loki Mini and the Loki Mini Pro. And these two devices have both AMD as well as Intel versions. And the price ranges on these between about $240 and $300 altogether. On that upper end of the spectrum, we have what they call the Loki and the Loki Max. These are exclusively using AMD CPUs. And really the only distinction between these is going to be the amount of storage and then the chip. So let's go through each of these one by one and I'll talk about what it is I ended up ordering and why. We'll start with the bottom end of the spectrum, so that's going to be the Loki Mini. Now, they actually didn't show it on that chart that we just were looking at, but it does have an Intel and AMT version of this Loki Mini. And the Intel version is using an Alder Lake CPU. It is the Celeron 7305. And the AMD version is running the upcoming Mendocino chip. This should be coming out sometime in quarter four of this year. Now, this is going to come with 128 gigs of internal storage and a 26.5 watt hour battery. And each model is also going to have Wi-Fi 6 as well as 8 gigabytes of RAM. And it'll be $240 for the Intel version and $260 for the AMD one. Now next up we have that Mini Pro. Now this one is very similar to the Mini with a couple different distinctions. First, it'll have a different Intel chip. This is going to be the Pentium 8505. But as far as we know, in terms of AMD, it's going to have the same chip inside. Now this is going to run $280 for the Intel version and $300 for the AMD one. And the other main distinction is this one is going to have a 40.5 watt hour battery. So it's nearly double the battery capacity of the other one. And when it comes to handheld PCs like that, battery makes a big difference. Now the Mini Pro is going to be a little bit thicker too. It looks to be about 25% thicker than the regular Mini. But all the same, the size on these is going to be about the same as a Nintendo Switch or the original Odin. And so when it comes to this line here, it might be confusing. You know, the pricing isn't that different between all of these, $240 to $300 altogether. So the way I see it, if you're going to buy a device for under $300, it's going to be a handheld PC, you're probably already aware that it's not going to play every AAA game under the sun. And so at that point, things like price and weight and size are probably going to be more important. And so between the two, if portability is more important, then you may want to get the lower spec mini model. And between these two, I would recommend getting the AMD one, and I'll show you why here in a second. Now, if battery life is more important to you, or you prefer Intel and want to have good performance, then I definitely would recommend getting the Mini Pro instead. And here's a good reason why. With the 7300 series, you can see here that the CPU clock speed is capped at 1 GHz. And here's the crazy thing about this line of chips, is that Intel actually does not allow it to turbo clock. It's been turned off. And when it comes to retro game emulation, CPU speed is very important. On the flip side, the Pentium 8500 is fully unlocked when it comes to turbo clocking the CPU. And so in that regard, you're going to get about four times the performance in turbo CPU clock speed for a price difference of only $40. And on top of that, the Mini Pro model will have a much bigger battery too. And so my recommendation, if you are looking between these four models, is to get the Loki Mini Pro Intel version. 
It may very well be that those AMD chips do perform really well, but we really don't know at this point. And so if you're looking for a very solid performing device, this Intel one's going to work too. The AMD one will probably be pretty good too, but it's a bit of an unknown quantity here at this time. Okay, let's move it up a bit and talk about the Loki and Loki Max. Now the Loki comes in three different sizes, 128 gigs all the way up to 256 or 512. And these all have the same AMD 6600U CPU. And we expect that this chip is going to perform about as well as the Steam Deck, if not a little bit better. Now AYN is doing something special with these in that you actually will make a reservation. So you'll drop down $25 and then you'll pay it in full later on. And if you're a previous Odin backer, then they'll give you an additional coupon as well. And so you could be paying up to $650 for the high spec model here, or you could also get the 128 gig model for about a $490 price. And also bear in mind that the Loki and Loki Max are just using a standard M.2 chip. And so potentially you could buy the lowest spec model of the Loki and then buy your own M.2 solid state drive and then swap it out yourself. You would save a lot of money that way. Anyway, in a nutshell, those are your options when it comes to the Loki, the same specs, but with different storage. Now, next up is going to be the Loki Max. This one is running an AMD 6800U CPU. And this hasn't been fully tested, but at this point, they are expecting this to perform about 50% better than the Steam Deck. And it is on sale in both black and white right now for $775, but you can also do a reservation system if you'd like, or you can take a $75 off coupon right now. And if you're an Odin backer, you'll get $125 off that price too. So in reality, for about $700, you could potentially get a handheld. It's going to be smaller and more portable than the Steam Deck, and it will run SteamOS, and you can get it available in any region. But of course, there's always a catch. And the thing about the 6800U CPU is that it's probably going to be a very power hungry chip. And as you can see here, the battery is only about 46 watt hours altogether. And so there's a potential here that the battery life on this could be pretty terrible. Like we're talking two hours or less. But again, it hasn't been tested or anything yet, so we're not really sure. Meanwhile, the regular Loki is going to be quite a bit less power hungry. And the battery is only about maybe 10% smaller than the one on the 6800U. So between these two, I think the battery life is going to be better on the regular Loki and not the Max. But of course, if performance is the most important thing to you, then the Max is the way to go. And so going back to this chart here that we were looking at a few minutes ago, for me personally, the two that I was looking at the most was the Intel 8505 in the sub $300 range and then the 6600U for the regular old Loki. Now I ended up going with the 512 gigabyte version because I was hoping that one would ship the fastest. And that's kind of important to me to get it quickly so I can do a review of it. But all things considered, if I was going to be a little bit more patient about it, I would have gotten the 128 gigabyte version and then upgraded the solid state drive myself. So that's the rundown of the AYN Loki. Now I want to turn over to the next subject, which is going to be the Aya Neo Air devices. Now, AYN and IANEO are completely different companies. I know they kind of sound similar. They have the A and the N and all that, but they are definitely distinct competitors. In fact, there seems to be a pretty heated competition for your dollar at this point. For example, just yesterday, the same day that the AYN Loki went on sale, IANEO dropped their price list for two new models of IANEO devices. And these are in direct competition with the ones we just looked at. And here's the chart here, and you'll probably see some familiar names here. In general, there are going to be two different devices. There's the IONEO Plus and then the IONEO 2 Geek. Now, the IONEO Air Plus comes in both Intel and AMD specs as well. But the interesting thing here is the higher grade Intel chip here is an Alder Lake Core i3. And this one, among all the other Intel chips that we've looked at so far, is probably going to be the best performing one for both emulation and gaming. In fact, the $300 price point here, or $270 if you get it as an early bird, to get something that powerful at that price is kind of a new thing in this industry. And of course, they also have an AMD spec one, which has that same Mendocino chip too. So at the $300 price point, you're looking at a device that could be potentially quite a bit more powerful than the Loki ones at the same price. Now, all three of these devices have a six inch display, which will be LCD, not OLED, like some of the other IONEO Airs that have been promoted recently. And then finally, we have the IONEO 2 Geek models. And these ones have the exact same chips as the Loki and Loki Max. And again, the prices seem to be comparable on this as well. Now this one looks to be quite a bit bigger than the other ones. You can see it has a seven inch display and it also looks to be a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which is the same as the other IONEO devices as well as the Steam Deck. So I would say in terms of portability, the IONEO Air Plus is gonna be much more portable than this one. But of course these two are gonna be a lot more powerful. 
Now, not to confuse you even more, but there are other IONEO Air devices on the way. And these ones are actually just called the IONEO Air and the IONEO Air Pro. And these are the ones that have been teased for a few weeks now. And these ones have completely different chips and different colors and everything else. And we don't know a ton about these yet, but they have shown a price spec list here for the IONEO Air versions, the non-pro ones. And as you can see, the starting price on these are about $500 and beyond. And so when it comes to budget Windows PCs, these are not going to be it. But it'll be interesting to see how these compare to the Geek model as those come forward in the future. Personally, I think that IONEO is just releasing way too many devices at once. We're at the point where I think there's something like five or six different devices in the works from this one company alone. And given the fact that these are hundreds of dollars each, it just seems like the market is becoming oversaturated, especially with a device that is going to have such a high price point that you're not going to be buying it very often. And so honestly, I'm most interested in that budget space. I think that there's something to be said about a device for under $300 that's going to be able to play a lot of 2D and indie like PC and Steam games. I think that's a really untapped market. And so I'm going to have links to the AOIN as well as the IONEO pages in my video description. And I recommend reading up on them a little bit more and seeing which one you think is going to work best for you. But in that lower price point, my recommendation is to go with the Intel 8505 when it comes to the Loki. And then for the IONEO Air Plus, I would get that i3 hands down. I remain skeptical about the Mendocino chips from AMD. Because they're going to be running at a very low TDP, they're made for low power systems like Chromebooks. And so my worry is that you won't get a lot of power performance when it comes to gaming on these devices. At the very least, the Intel chips are a known commodity and we should see some really nice performance. Now you might be trying to decide between the IONEO as well as the AYN. Because honestly, they look very similar and they also have very similar features. And honestly, it's hard to say because no one's actually held these in their hands yet. But we do have some evidence from the past that may help us make that decision. For example, in the handheld PC space, IONEO is a known company. They've been around for a few years at this point. And they've definitely had their bumps along the road. But there's something to be said about a company who's well established, who has probably worked out some of the other hiccups when it comes to their devices previous. And in that regard, I do think that IONEO is probably going to be better at shipping out a Windows handheld with some relative speed and efficiency. Meanwhile, AYN is still a very young company, and honestly, they're still kind of working through their hiccups. For example, last August, I ordered an Odin Lite, and back then, they said that they would be shipping in October of 2021. Well, it quickly slipped to November of 2021, and then even on their website, it still says that if you buy one now, it'll come in January of 22. But here we are in June, and not a single Odin Lite has been shipped yet. And on top of that, they have a huge backlog of Odin Lights and Odin Pros to actually get through and deliver. And so my worry is that by adding additional devices to their manufacturing process, it's going to slow down everything even more. And so even though both of these companies say that these devices will be out by the end of 2022, if I was a betting man, I would say between these two, Aya Neo is going to deliver theirs first. Now, these aren't the only two budget-based Windows handhelds that are coming out in the future. I recently did a video about the Ambernic Win 600. This device has been in the works for several months at this point. And at face value, the Win 600 might be a pretty good device. It's going to be able to run both Windows and SteamOS as well. But I gotta say, between these three companies, even though Ambernic is likely the one closest to release, we actually know the least about this device. For example, we have no idea what chips is inside, and based on the rumors that I've heard, it's not going to be very powerful at all. And on top of that, Ambernic has had a habit of pricing their devices a little bit higher than the competition. And so my concern here is, yes, the Ambernic Win 600 will probably be the first one released, but it'll be far and away the least powerful, and it may end up being the same price as the other ones as well. Alright everyone, this video was quite long, a lot longer than I thought it would be, but I hope it was informative when it comes to actually making a decision if you're in the market to buy a sub $300 Windows handheld. Personally, I think it's super awesome that we're getting all of these options available, and I honestly think the Steam Deck kind of blew this whole market wide open. So, as I mentioned before, the Loki is available for pre-order right now, but I'm not quite sure when the Ioneal Air is going to go up for its Indiegogo campaign. Either way, I'll be sure to announce it here on this channel or in my social media, and I'm excited to see where this goes next. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Are any of these interesting to you and which one would you get for $300 or less? As always, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.